In this video, we will continue weight painting. But this time, we will weight paint the small items, like the pouch and backpack, using a technique called vertex parenting, which is insanely powerful and fast. In weight paint mode, use the add brush and color the thigh area on the root bone. Select the thigh bone, use the blur brush, smooth the knee a bit. As you can see, it's not improving a lot. And that's how I knew auto normalize is turned off. We will turn it on in the near future. The thumb isn't completely red in the hand bone, so let's paint it. Use an add brush and paint it until it becomes fully red. You can see it changed a bit. Now we will turn on auto normalize. After I turn it on, I'll do normalize deform for all vertex groups. Weights. Normalize all. The weight changed a bit as you can see. I'll continue painting this area. The painting process might be easier or harder after turning on auto normalize. Whether it gets easier or harder, at least this is the right way. The foot bone is fine, so I'll test the other bones now. Like the head or the neck and shoulders. Now I'll try fixing the armpit. Use a subtract brush. Maybe we'll add it back later, I don't know. Since we finished weight painting the thighs, we will move on to weight paint the pouch. Press L to select it, P to separate by selection. Add data transfer modifier and hide the mesh. What I'm gonna do is copy a part of the character under the pouch. Then the pouch will take the weight of that part. In edit mode, select a few faces, Shift D, right click, P, selection. Now it's a separate object. I'll sample the data transfer modifier to take the weight from this new object. Tick vertex data, also vertex groups. Now set it to nearest face interpolated. Generate data layers and apply the modifier. Now let's test the weight. As you can see, it's decent, but not perfect. I'll show you now what happens if we use different options. Add the data transfer modifier again. Set the rig to rest pose. Set the settings in the data transfer back. Same settings, but change the vertex data mapping. Maybe projected face interpolated. Apply the modifier and see how it looks. We'll set it back to pose. And this looks worse, at least in my opinion. You can try all mappings, but the first one we used, which is nearest face interpolated, is the best for this case. This one looks the worst. 
I sped up the video because you can test them all on your own. In the end, I settled with Nero's face interpolated. We will improve it by hand. Go to weight paint mode, select the armature, then the pouch and weight paint mode. Select the thigh bone, smooth it with blur brush. Keep smoothing it. Because auto normalize is turned on, we need to smooth it from different bones. And also the spinal bone. And test it out. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. I think we're done here. Don't want to make this a long course. As always, join the object back to the character with Ctrl G and delete the hidden duplicate mesh we created earlier. We'll do the same technique on the backpack too. Select a few faces, Shift D, right click, P, selection. Before transferring the weight, I'm making sure it's good on the backpack in the first place. As you can see, it needs work. The shoulders shouldn't move the backpack that much. Add data transfer modifier on the backpack to steal the weight of the duplicate part. Sample the duplicate from the outliner. Take verdict data, nearest face interpolated. Now try. Still looking bad, but at least it's better. Decent. Go to weight pin mode for the backpack. Now select any bone and use the blur brush to smooth it. Some areas will be difficult to adjust and you'll have to switch bones. That's basically it. If an area isn't deforming well, that means the vertices are shared across multiple of bones. Weight painting is an experiment game. It's not like I know exactly what to do. Every model is different and you must try to adjust it to look best. Because I explained the weight painting tools in the beginning, this should be easy for you. If you understand the basics of deformation, you'll know how to approach weight painting. The shoulder pulls the backpack, so I'm trying to fix it by subtracting the weight from the shoulder so it doesn't move the backpack. It's currently bad right now, I don't want the shoulder to move the bottom part of the backpack. If your weight is dirty, blur it with a blur brush. Although the bottom part is blue, it moved up with the shoulder, and that happens because there is a bone parented to the shoulder bone and influences the bottom part of the backpack. The upper arm moves it as I suspected. So whenever you see an area deforming in a weird way, check all bones. Rotate the chest bone. Notice we have some issues. 
that means some nearby bone is responsible. This bone has some influence. And this one was the culprit. The shoulder bone has too much influence. It controls the other side of the bone, which it shouldn't. Don't forget the inner side of the backpack. And I think we're done here. We can improve it even further, but I don't want to make this long. Delete the duplicate mesh we created. Unhide the backpack and join it with the body. Control S to save the project. 